On the stage now, from Minneapolis, Dr. Janelle Anderson. Now, when I work with organizations, we cover everything from the mundane to the things that make us insane and everything in between as far as difficult conversations go. Now, what are some of the mundane issues? Because you know those mundane issues left unchecked, they can scale into those insane issues really, really quickly. What are some of the mundane issues, you know, things that coworkers do and so forth that just really drive you bonkers? What are some of them? You, come on up, come on up and help me up. Yeah, oh please, please, listen to me. I promise it won't hurt. Come on up, come on up. Stand right over here. Welcome her to the stage. Tell me your name. Danny, let's welcome Danny to the stage. Danny. Texting is one of the things that I get asked about a lot. You can come stand right next to me. I promise this won't, this won't hurt a bit. This won't hurt a bit. Dan, Danny, right? And who texts you a lot? Daycare, okay. So Danny gets a lot of texts from daycare. I have three kids too. I get those texts from daycare, so I totally get it. Now, this is one of the issues that comes up a lot. One of those mundane issues that goes to the insane when Danny gets a lot of texts. Now, let's just suppose that Danny and I uh, work very near each other. We're right across the cubicle wall from one another. And Danny's so thoughtful, she's turned her phone down to vibrate and set it on the desktop. <laughs> I'm on the other side of that cubicle wall, and any time Danny gets a text, my desk shakes too. Now, I'm gonna go talk to Danny about this because this is an issue that's been bothering me. So, I approach Danny. Danny, you know, um, this weekend, I was with my in-laws and I was talking to my sister-in-law about her phone. Do you know that she didn't realize that her phone goes one step lower than vibrate? She thought vibrate was just as low as it went. Do you, could you believe that somebody didn't even know that? So I took her phone and I just pressed the down button just one more time and it went totally to silent. And she had no idea that it could even do that. All right, how'd I do? How did I do? Good. Does she know there was a problem? No. No, I talked all the way around it. I was passive aggressive, potentially. We didn't get it resolved at all. So let me try again. Danny, I have had it. Your daycare texts you all the time and it interrupts my work and I can't get anything done. And if you don't get that situation with your wild children at daycare under control, I'm gonna have to take this to HR. I have had it. All right, how'd I do? All right, now let me try one last time. Danny, we've known each other for what, like five minutes now? And in those five minutes, you have been incredibly helpful. You because when I tally up the hours, it looks more like this. Six hours of ruminating about the situation, five hours of talking to anybody who will listen to me about the situation, except the person that I need to be talking to about it, another three hours of answering email, tidying up my desk, and other procrastination techniques, and a final two hours of going out onto social media to look for some support. And I start at Facebook, and then I click through to a Twitter feed, which takes me to Pinterest, and oh, those shoes are nice, and ding! Zappos delivers. <laughs> a total of 16 hours and a pair of shoes. Styles and costs may vary. It's expensive when we back away from, from conversations that are challenging and confrontational. But it happens all the time. You see it at work. In fact, you probably saw it last week one day with one of your colleagues who said in the meeting, fine, whatever, when clearly it wasn't fine. She didn't agree with what was being said, but she didn't have the courage to stand up and say what needed to be said. She pulled back. What would it be like if instead of fine, whatever, she had the courage to stand up and say what needs to be said? It might sound like this. Well, I respectfully disagree. Or I don't feel like I can be on board with this program. I don't have enough information. What would it be like if she did that? Little by little, the organizational culture would shift and change. But she doesn't. She pulls back, and sometimes it's not her. Sometimes it's you and me. And we pull back from that difficult conversation. We go back to our office space. We organize some things. And at best, we sulk and pout about it. At worst, we trash talk our team, our boss, the organization, and even our clients polluting the office environment and poisoning the culture. Okay, we'll try again. Hi. Hi, my name's Janelle. Oh, hi, Janelle. I'm Lila. Is, hi, is Lila. my butt look too big? 
Um, is I wasn't. No, I think that suit's actually very flattering really, on you. Yeah. Because I have this thing. It's like I. I mean, it's it's like a gastrointestinal thing. <laughs> And oh, um, yeah. Well, so I mean, it's I'm just, so sorry to hear that. No, I mean, that. it's it's, it's almost under um, control. I mean, I do a lot of you know, you, just have you worked, it's like have, therapy. Have you worked? How long have you been with the company? Um, well, I'm on a medical leave actually, and so because of you know, and there's other. Uh, my nostril was injured when I was oh, in high school and everything, I, and so I, I'm gonna go get another I, drink. I, okay. I, nice to meet you. <laughs> All right. So what happened there? Too much information!